Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bianca. So I'm really anxious to start this video. So real quickly, I just want to say I hope you enjoy these $100 Dollar Tree DIYs. I decided to put most of my DIYs together in one video. So there are a hundred Dollar Tree DIYs for you to see. This is from the start of my YouTube journey. So it's been two and a half years for me now. And also real quickly, I decided to simplify it so it's not super, super long. And I don't want to bore anybody. So let me know what you think below. And I hope you enjoy this. I'll see y'all in the next video. One of the easiest ways to decorate is by picking up some Dollar Tree vases. And what I did right here was just add the Dollar Tree lemons. Super simple. Another easy way that you can use these vases is by adding some in your bathroom. You can add bars of soap, flowers, cotton balls, and Q-tips. A fun way to organize your spices is by picking up a cookie pan and magnetic tins from the Dollar Tree. Just stick them on and add labels. For a simple farmhouse shelf, I'm using two canvases and some contact paper. You can add hot glue or for a better hold, E6000. Where the two canvases meet on the bottom right here, I would place craft sticks for a better and secure hold. The contact paper from Dollar Tree is very forgiving and very easy to use. If you lay it down and it's a little wrinkly, you can easily just pick it back up and swipe it back down with any card. To add some simple decor to your home, you can add a candle holder with a glass vase and some LED tea lights. For this one, I am painting the candle holder black and then I'm going to glue it underneath the vase. And just add a candle inside. I'm adding two because they only have small ones like this at Dollar Tree. For a spring and summer look, I am making a buffalo check background with a bucket of flowers. I painted the MDF sign white. And to create the buffalo check, we're going to have a light blue and dark blue paint. I also added painter's tape about an inch apart for the light blue stripes. Adding tape the opposite way, I'm going to paint over the light blue squares with the dark blue paint. Skipping an inch underneath the dark blue paint I just painted and adding the tape again and painting over the light blue squares. Once that's done, repeating the same steps again with the tape, except I'm using the light blue paint to go over the white paint. Using E6000 to add the bucket to the front of the sign, adding flowers inside, and that completes the look. Using another candlestick and round piece of wood to make a mini cake stand for this next DIY. You can leave the candlestick as is or paint it white like I'm doing here and then gluing that to the piece of wood. These Dollar Tree plastic flower pots can look so much better by just adding a little bit of white paint by dry brushing that on, adding a label, mod podging that on, and then adding any kind of flowers or greenery inside of there. On to the 10th DIY, I'm making a vintage looking window pane with these four wooden picture frames. 
You can leave the window pane clear or to make it look old, I'm adding some pages from a Dollar Tree book or you can use scrap paper. And then just adding E6000 to glue them together and for more support, adding craft sticks to the back. For some vintage farmhouse style books, you can use scrap paper again or pages from an old book and just Mod Podge pieces of it on top of the book. Lastly, you can add twine if you'd like. For this home sweet home sign, I made it out of this canvas and tumbling tower blocks. I'm using Jacobean stain from Minwax and then gluing them together with hot glue. You can add anything to the sign. I'm putting home sweet home and then I'm going to add twine to the top. And then I'll glue down the two rows of tumbling towers on top and bottom of the sign. I'm going to make a light up sconce with these four canvases and some doilies. First, I remove the canvas from the frame. And then I stained them with my Jacobean stain. Hot glue it down to the doily and then cut off the excess. Glue all four frames together. When I previously made this about two years ago, I hot glued the lights on the inside, but I would recommend using the indoor scotch mount tape. I wanted a wreath for my bathroom, so I grabbed a grapevine wreath and a canvas from Dollar Tree, added some pretty white hydrangeas, a little bit of greenery, and I didn't hot glue the carrots down because once Easter was over during that time, I could just remove them. Another way to make over some bases would be to paint them. I did a few coats of gray, added some rope to the top and bottom, and then just added flowers inside. This Dollar Tree blue basket came in handy for a nice floral arrangement. Added terracotta pots and lots and lots of flowers. At the Dollar Tree, these candlesticks used to be so popular. So what I did right here was give it a makeover by first painting them all white. Then I just go back and forth with a light and dark brown. Then I added a little bit of black and then I go back over it with the browns just to smear those colors all around. For different heights, I glued two together. To go on top of those candle holders, I'm easily turning these basic terracotta pots into aged terracotta pots. With a little bit of dry brushing, I completely changed the look. To finish the look, I'm just adding these green moss balls. For these two pieces, I'm basically doing the same thing I did to the candle holders. First, I'm painting them white and then layering light and dark brown. But this time, I'm not using black. I'm actually adding white to it. This just kind of reminded me of Mediterranean decor. And then lastly, I'll add this lace ribbon. To make this mini ladder, I have some wooden dowels and tumbling tower blocks. After painting four wooden dowels and 12 blocks brown, I'm gonna glue it together. For an easy farmhouse picture, I picked this one up and to give it a nice base coat, I'm painting the whole thing white first. I'm painting part of the bottom brown and then the rest of the top black. So this is another take on a mini cake stand. I painted this glass candle holder white when that dried, I painted it with a matte black and then glued it together with this black ceramic candle holder. You can add a vase to the top with the candle 
or you can do what I did here and add a bucket with flowers. For this little farmhouse sign, I'm using the galvanized background out of this frame. I remember during this time I made this DIY a while back. I only had two of the frames, but this sign would have looked probably a little bit better with three. Then I added our nest with these Target dollar spot letters. I'm making another window pane out of these four frames and since you've seen me do this earlier, I'm going to skip through the parts I showed already and then I just add the crab sticks to the back for that secure hold and now I'm adding a burlap bow to the top. For video purposes, I added hot glue to secure the bucket, but I recommend E6000. For this little summer crate, I grabbed these two signs made out of MDF and this flat stretched canvas for the bottom of it. After cutting it, I'm adding the two signs to each side of it. So it's not so wobbly, I'm adding one crab stick to each side, but you can definitely go all the way from the bottom This summer pillow couldn't have been any easier to make. All I did was fold this flower sack in half, added hot glue to the left and right sides of it, left the bottom open to stuff it with a $2 pillow from Walmart, and then finished sealing it with the hot glue. This next sign I'm making, I'm using this pink little Hobby Lobby tin and Dollar Tree platter. While that was drying, I'm painting the platter with my chiffon chalk paint. Now this would be easier to use spray paint, but I didn't have any at the time. After giving it a little bit of black detail, I'm adding this wall art to it, and then I'll be putting the bucket underneath that. For this sign, I'm using a frame, and instead of leaving it black, I decided to paint it gray. Then I added some twine diagonally from one end to the other. And then added twine the opposite way. And then I grabbed a piece of cardboard, painted it black to add to the middle. There are many different ways I could have added eat to the sign, but I just used cardboard, painted it white with my chalk paint, and then glued it to the middle. For this summer two-tiered tray, I have a charger and a plate and two different candle holders. And the pineapple will go at the top. So now that I showed you how I'm going to set it up, I'm going to paint the charger white. You can leave the pineapple yellow, but I decided to paint it white along with the other two candle holders. I'm placing this candle holder upside down so the pineapple has a nice flat surface to sit on. On to DIY number 30. So this is another take on a Dollar Tree vase. I painted the bottom half white and the top half black. And to the center, I added some burlap ribbon and wrapped it around twice. Lastly, I added some Walmart wooden utensils. I picked up this blue platter and painted it white. To go on top of that platter, I'm painting these wooden letters that spell out farmhouse. After gluing those letters on, I picked up these Dollar Tree self-adhesive hooks and painted two of them black so I can add it to the platter. To go on those hooks, I'm making over this little bucket. I'm using this contact paper to apply it to the bucket. So just taking pieces and using a card to help me smooth it out.
Once I have all four sides covered, I'm taking one last piece to cover the bottom. Switching out the ribbon with some nautical rope. I'm adding this plant hanger by my front door. And this chain goes with that to connect to the flower pot. After adding the flowers, I'm connecting it to the flower pot with some twine. Since I wanted it by my front door, I added it to a bucket of rocks and soil. To go outside by my plant hanger, I'm making a mini stool with a pizza pan and four rolling pins. Paint this any color you want, but I'm painting everything white. To glue this together, I'm adding hot glue. And of course, I don't want to add anything too heavy on this or it will fall apart. And this is just another idea you can do with flower pots. I have some clay ones and plastic ones and I'm painting some of them white and leaving some of them as is. For these next two DIYs that I'm going to show you, I decided to use green chalk paint to add to my decor. And I'm painting one of them with that green paint and the other one black. To the black cutting board, I'm adding a white stripe to the center. And to the green one, I'm adding Farm Fresh with some wooden letters. Going along with those same paint colors, I'm painting three bases with that green chalk paint. And then I'm adding one, two, and three, painting those wooden numbers with black paint. I'm making a home sign out of these four little frames. After removing these sawtooth hangers and stickers, I painted all of them white. Then I painted the edges with some brown paint. Taking some poster stickers, I spelled out home. I'm using the back of this MDF frame to make a sign. After painting the whole thing white, I'm taking this ticking fabric and cutting off a piece to hang up a wreath on it. Then I'm spelling out hello in the middle with some wooden letters. Using more of that fabric, I'm making a bow out of it, tying it off in the middle with some twine, and then I'll be covering it with more fabric. For the 40th DIY, I'm making an herb crate. Back then, before the crafter section came out, we had to be super creative. So I had used these wooden basketball pieces from the toy section at Dollar Tree. After connecting two and two together with my wood glue, I added a flower pot in the middle to see how wide I wanted it to be. Picked up a Dollar Tree basket and cut out two rectangular pieces for the sides. Then I used some brown and black paint to paint the pieces. Added nautical rope and then glued these pieces to the sides. Lastly, I took some poster letters and added herbs to the front of it. I didn't add a bottom to this, but you could add a piece of cardboard or canvas. Using craft sticks, I'm making a little wooden fence sign. And then I'm painting it with some watered down brown paint. I'm painting my wooden letters that spell out bacon black. I used this Hobby Lobby sign to trace out the pig and used Mod Podge on top of it to harden it and added all of this to my sign. I have some craft sticks, a cup, and a piece of poster to make these white picket fence bases. 
After cutting out a piece to go around the cup, I'm cutting the craft sticks to make them look like a picket fence and then painting them white. Now I'm gluing them to the poster and the cup is used for a hard surface. I'm using a canvas and removing everything from the frame. Adding a piece of poster to give it a hard background. Using crab sticks and cutting off the ends and adding it to that to give it a shiplap background. Lastly, I added This Is Us with some poster stickers. Now I'm making a rustic sign. First, I'm painting everything white. Then adding some faux shiplap lines, sanding it down a little bit to reveal some of that background, and adding some brown paint to give it more of a rustic look. I'm adding a pocket of burlap ribbon. I had this fabric and I cut off a piece to add it to the front of it. For this one, I'm using a pizza pan to make a rustic looking tray. I painted it white and then used this Dollar Tree sign to trace out the rooster. Then I painted it black and distressed the tray with that same paint. I applied Mod Podge to the tray first and then added the rooster on top of that and Mod Podge to the top. And then I used nautical rope for the handles. All I did was paint this candle holder white and added some brown paint to give it a rustic farmhouse look. This little birdhouse needed a makeover, so I'm going to be painting it and adding crab sticks. So you won't see the wording on the opposite side. I added a little piece of black fabric. Then I hot glued the crab sticks on. I simply just added some flowers and burlap inside of this vase to give it the look I was going for. And here's a look at the rustic candlestick and birdhouse. For this unique ladder, I removed everything from the three canvases and then painted them brown with a bristled brush. And then I'm going to add a bucket to each of them with this lace ribbon. After that, I'll hot glue the three together. I painted some numbers black and added it to the front of the buckets. DIY number 50. You are halfway there guys. Thank you if you've stayed this long. We got 50 more to go. I'm using four wooden rulers to make this next sign. I'm using the end of a painting brush to add the Gorilla Glue. Once all glued together, I'm painting it black and white. Since this is an old DIY, now I would probably cover the holes with some spackle but it's just personal preference. I could have glued this home sign and called it a day, but I was using it for something else. So that's why I traced it on here and then painted it in with some gray paint. This next one, I took a sign, added a wreath to it, and then some greenery and flowers. I'm making some mini shutters with these rulers and craft sticks. And I'm going to stain them with some Jacobean stain from Minwax. Once dry, I'm basically gluing everything together backwards. You can see on this side of the ruler, there's a raised area and that's going to help me place the craft sticks centered. Then I turned it around and added greenery to the front. 
I'm making a sign with this plastic tray to go in between the shutters. Once dried, I'm adding some white lines. And then I'm making a bow out of burlap ribbon. I'm making a vintage general store sign out of two pieces of wood from Home Depot. I believe they were a little over a dollar each. After using my wood glue to glue them together and painting it white, I'm taking the poster stickers and spelling out general store. Then underneath that, I'm stenciling on milk, butter, and cream. Then I will be outlining around the sign. I used Mod Podge to seal everything and then sanded it down for a more rustic look. I got this idea to make some vintage jars from Fancy That Design House. Pause it to see the ingredients pictured. First, I'm mixing up some Mod Podge and water. After mixing, I'm adding different food coloring to come up with two different colors. Then I put one of the mixtures inside of the mason jar, roll it around, and then drip out the excess back into the bowl. We're gonna leave it upside down for a while and then place in the oven. I made that little display where the mason jars are sitting with these four boxes. After painting them white, I hot glued them together. You can paint them any color you want, but I also decided to add some brown paint to it. I'm using these two thin pieces of wood from the toy section at Dollar Tree to make a sign with hooks. Once glued together, I'm adding this Dollar Tree spackle to the ends. When that dries, you can sand it down. I'm painting it green, adding my Jacobean stain on top, and then adding white paint to the top of that. Using this wall mount wired rack, I'm gonna glue it to the back of the sign. Then I added welcome to the top. I'm giving these really bright colored buckets a more neutral look. For this part, you could just use gray paint, but I decided to use this stain You can use stickers right here or stencil on the words like I did. I'm making a faux wood clock with this plastic tray. Now I'm adding light and dark brown paints to this and then I'll add black paint and then go back and forth with those two. I stenciled on some lines and I'll also stencil on the numbers. I'm making more vintage books, but these are very different than the ones from earlier in the video. Using this fabric, I'm gonna cut off the piece to add to the ends of the books. Using painter's tape, I'm adding a couple of stripes. After hot gluing the fabric on, I'm adding a couple of buttons to each end of the book.
I'm using this sign, turning it around, and we're gonna apply spackle to the two holes at the top. After painting it white, I'm using a ruler to outline the edges of the sign with black paint. I'm spelling out home sweet home on the sign. For the word sweet, we're gonna stencil that on. And I'm adding a little wreath with some pieces of greenery. I'm making two farmhouse tags with some craft sticks. I'm using six and cutting the bottoms off. Then marking them with my ruler right here, cutting that off so it looks like the ones on Pinterest. I'm painting them black and then I'm gonna glue them with my wood glue. But I think it would have been easier if I would have just used a piece of poster and hot glue them down on that. It's going to say number six, so I'm stenciling this part on and then adding a wooden number. Tumbling tower blocks were such a big deal back then, so I decided to use them to vamp up a basket that I have. After gluing together six of them, I'm adding this stain. Then I stenciled on home. Then I'm adding these little dot stickers from Hobby Lobby. I'm using this one for a sign. After sanding off most of the glitter, I'm using this territorial beige. Using my stencils and gray paint to spell out country at the top. Then I am painting my wooden letters to spell out farm at the bottom. And I printed out this free printable of a tractor to put in the middle. Lastly, I added EST 2019. I'm making a farm fresh bag out of this Dollar Tree black fabric. Top part of this bag is open, so I am folding it down twice on both sides and just using my hot glue to glue it in place. I'm stenciling on farm fresh in front of the bag. I could have cut off more of the sides because it kind of ended up being too wide, the bag, but that's okay. I'm just going to hem it in a couple times and hot glue it. Then I'm adding burlap to the sides. Lastly, I added nautical rope to hang it. I'm using two canvases to make a little caddy. Hot gluing them to each other and then painting them black. I'm gonna remove everything from these two MDF signs and paint them black. After hot gluing them to the sides, I'm adding nautical rope at the top and burlap on the inside. This will also help cover up the ends of the rope. I added the scrap canvas at the bottom, but I would recommend using cardboard or foam board. Lastly, I stenciled on flowers to the side. I really like the way this Dollar Tree frame came, so I'm using that and I'm just adding a piece of poster to the back. And then I used poster stickers. I'm using canvases again to make some easy DIY signs. I love using these because once everything's removed, you're left with real wood frames. Since I used cardstock, all I have to do is glue the frames on and then cut off the excess. My Dollar Tree already started putting out fall flowers and cotton stems, so the previous DIY and this wreath could give you ideas if you want to start early. On to DIY number 70. Give me a big thumbs up if you are still here. I'm going to use these buckets and spell out farmhouse, 
But before that, I'm taking a black Sharpie and distressing it by adding some black lines everywhere. Then I'm taking the letters to spell out farmhouse and painting them black and gluing them on. That's pretty much it if you want a simple look or you can add flowers or greenery inside. I'm painting this silver platter for a sign and then I'll be adding that decal. And distressing it with my Sharpie. I'm making a little farmhouse stand or cake stand with this candlestick and oval silver platter. After drying, I'm gluing that candlestick to the bottom and adding Sharpie marks to this as well. I'm using canvases again for this DIY to make a home sign. And now I'm going to use this stain. And then I'm using a black poster for the background of each frame. You can use a stencil, Cricut, or template to put the wording that you want. And then I'm gluing them together, but you could totally leave them separated. If I glue anything together, you'll always see me add craft sticks where the two objects meet because it just ensures a better hold. I'm using these mini trinket boxes and giving them a makeover with this wooden contact paper. First, I'm cutting off a piece to add it around the trinket box. And I start off by adding it and just, and then using a card to help me smooth it out. Once the contact paper was on, I removed the little drawers, painted them white, and then I'm going to be adding some mini wooden bead pulls to this. I decided to glue them side by side, but you could stack them as well. I'm using this garden fence to make a modern looking basket. First, I removed the stakes at the bottom and then put the two ends together. giving this a bottom with a piece of poster. I have this green basket that I'm going to spray with my chiffon chalk paint. Then I used a piece off of this old sign, added a little bit of white paint to it, added spring with my poster stickers, and put it on the middle of the basket. And added flowers and greenery. I'm using four canvases to make a lantern. After staining them, I grabbed a garden fence and used that to decorate each frame. Lastly, I just hot glued all four frames together. I used a scrap piece of canvas for this next sign, grabbed two craft sticks, cut the ends off, and then stained them to add to the top and the bottom. Then I took some Walmart letters and added bloom to the bottom, then just added some greenery. For this one, I'm using a pack of two burner covers. After spray painting them black, I'm adding two pockets of burlap. Then I add nautical rope to hang it and greenery. Make sure you are subscribed if you are still here. We are on DIY number 80. 
these beautiful pictures from Pinterest gave me this idea for these next vases. I'm hot gluing a candlestick on the biggest vase and adding clay pots and saucers to the vases. After adding some greenery, I'm adding rolled up book pages. And after that, I added a few more decor pieces like some old books with Dollar Tree books. For this wagon wheel, I'm using this wreath just to help me draw out a circle on this cardboard. After I cut that out, I'm cutting out the center. Then I am left with this and I'm using this contact paper to cover it. Once I'm left with this, I'm using these wooden dowels from Walmart and painting them the way the picture is on Pier 1. For the buckets, I'm just adding a little bit of gray paint and then I took a round small piece of cardboard, painted it, and now I'm gluing the dowels to that. Once those are glued on, I'm covering it with another piece of cardboard. This is actually the back side of the wagon wheel. I'm gluing it down this way and then I'll turn it around. Last but not least, I'm adding twine to the buckets and then onto the dowels. For another simple wreath, I'm adding this Dollar Tree garland and flowers. First, I'm just wrapping around the garland and then I'll start hot gluing down all the flowers. For this simple garland, I'm doubling two Dollar Tree ones. I always have these tulips in my Amazon store linked below. And then I'm also going to add some eucalyptus. Using four canvases made out of MDF, I'm gluing them together to make a window pane. Then I painted it white glued them together and added craft sticks to the back. Adding a wreath to the middle along with a Dollar Tree wreath charm. After that, I added a little basket, connected it with twine and added flowers. I'm using another wreath charm to make a beaded garland. I actually love the pink flowers on here, but for this, at that time, I was going for a different look, so I created a little fresh cut flowers printout, and I'm gonna Mod Podge it to that. Then I sealed it with more Mod Podge, added twine at the top, and then added beads to that. I really liked this Dollar Tree frame because it looks rustic and I used it for a previous DIY but I wanted to use it again to make a little rustic stand. Using craft sticks, I'm going to cover both sides and stain them. Then I will hot glue them down. And then I'm adding four wood pieces at the bottom. DIY number 87 is really easy. I'm just going to add my favorite ribbon and some greenery. For this one, I am using four random vases. They don't have to be vases. They can be anywhere from plastic cups to clay pots. I'm going to cover each one up with some craft paper. To give it a rustic look, I'm crumbling it first, and then I will be adding hot glue to wrap it around each vase. Hey, hey, hey. 
I'm adding my wooden letters to spell out farm on each base, then greenery and some lace ribbon. I have a black frame and this pack of galvanized signs for this next one. You can leave the galvanized sign as is, but I wanted it to match the frame. And then I painted the candlestick. The frame is going to go on top of that. Then I added some browns and blacks just to give it a rustic look. Once I glued the frame on top of that, I added some tumbling tower blocks to both sides so it wouldn't wobble back and forth. For DIY number 90, I'm using this Dollar Tree frame. Then I'm using this free printable and adding it to a piece of poster or you can add it to some cardstock just to give it a hard background and then I'll glue it to the frame. I'll try to link everything below. And then I'm going to paint these colorful wooden beads and add it to the frame. These next few I'm going to show you are going to be some bathroom DIYs. So I'm taking this spray paint and painting two Dollar Tree soap dispensers. Once that dried, I mod podged a couple of free printables on top. I'm going to make over this over the door <laughs> rack that can go anywhere in your house. By bending back and forth, I removed the two top pieces and then I spray painted it black. Then I'm taking four Dollar Tree rulers. I'm gonna cut them down to fit on top of this. And I was able to use my scissors, but you might wanna use your miter saw box. Now that I got them cut down to fit the hooks perfectly, I'm adding Gorilla Glue to this cardboard just to glue it down to a flat surface. Then I will add it to the hooks. Lastly, I added zip ties to hang it up. This next one is almost too easy. I just removed the handle and then I'm going to spray paint it black. Then I'm using these Dollar Tree jars, spray painting the lids black and then I'll be adding some Dollar Tree wooden beads to the top of them. And then just stuff them with whatever you'd like. I'm making over another reed charm, but this time I'm covering the hole up with spackle and then I'll be adding some wooden beads all around it. After Mod Podging a printable I created, I added hot glue and super glue to glue the beads, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because it just did not stick adding a wet glue with hot glue. So just use one or the other. The lighting sucked in here even with my lights, but you get the idea. I'm gonna make a wooden holder for some greenery with clothespins. I'm using a piece of cardboard so I have something for the clothespins to hang on to. Then I painted it black and went ahead and added the clothespins to it and hot glued the two ends together. I gave it a bottom with another piece of cardboard and then added onion grass to it. For this last bathroom DIY, I'm using another free printable to make a sign and some Dollar Tree rulers. I'm using these wooden canvases to make a tray. After removing everything, I stained them, glued two together. The other two frames are gonna go on top like this, connecting with craft sticks. I just painted them black and then I'm adding them to the frames like this. Now I'm adding the top with hot glue 
and then I'll add rope to the sides for handles. This is another take on some farmhouse shutters. I'm using three MDF signs from Dollar Tree. To put them together, I'm using crab sticks. Then I turned it around on the front side. I'm gonna figure out how many crab sticks are gonna go in the middle. Then I used watered down gray paint. Once I had the smaller crab sticks glued down in the middle, I'm taking some large Walmart ones and figuring out how many I need. Then I will stain them with some watered down brown paint and cut off the ends. And then I hot glued those down. I'm so happy you made it to 100 DIYs. Thank you so much. For this last one, I had to include this dupe of this family sign from Kirkland's. First things first, I added this Dollar Tree decal to a piece of foam board. Using Walmart craft sticks, I start to put together the background. Now adding those side pieces, they will connect to the frame. Using watered down brown paint to paint the crab sticks. Then I added more crab sticks to create the frame, except for these I cut off the ends. To connect the frame, I glued smaller crab sticks where they meet. I am so happy you stayed till the end. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know how you like this video and I'll see y'all in the next one.